Hey everybody, it's Jesse. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Well, it's been a while since we've been on here. And the last thing I talked to you guys about was uh, Rowdy and being in the hospital. And um, then you didn't hear anything from us. And I apologize for that. Um, Rowdy did get to come home from the hospital on the 27th of August, his birthday. Um, and um, he... Had to grow stronger from there. He ended up losing, oh, he lost about eight pounds. He got uh, lost down to 20 pounds, and uh, but he's doing really good. He is back to his smiling self, playing and and uh, 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 just being a precious child. But in the process of all that time, sickness struck the rest of the house, and it started with Cheyenne, who got so sick actually while she was in the hospital with Rowdy. Her little eye uh, swelled, and and um, then she started going through all of the different uh, symptoms that Rowdy had had, except, of course, for the uh, seizures and the um, pneumonia caused by uh, aspiration. Um, and so, like I said, it started with her. They got home on Sunday. She was sick and trying to get rested up. A blade, he, he was sick. Uh, and then the next person to get sick was little Howie, and Howie spiked really high fevers of, of 103, um, and we, uh, Shine had talked to the doctors while she was in the hospital with Howie, I mean, I'm excuse, excuse me, with Rowdy, and um, what Rowdy initially had was rhinovirus and adenovirus. Um, rhinovirus is contagious, and that's what we all got. But there is not a medication that they put you on to um, counteract that. Um, it has to run its course, and um, that's what it had to do with all of us. And um, um, the mainly rest, lots of fluids, um, medications for Howie to break his fever. Um, just you're just kind of miserable, kind of achy. Um, they've ruled out COVID, ruled out the flu, all that kind of stuff. It was rhinovirus, and so it just went through the entire home. And for over a week, I have been hoarse and have a, had had a horrible cough. Um, still kind of scratchy throat, still kind of um, have a, a cough that is lingering. No fever, nothing like that. I don't feel too bad. I get tired, a little bit tired in the afternoons, but um, we're on the mend. But it was just so that we just did, could not be doing any videos. It just, um, you know, with with uh, sick babies and we were sick ourselves, there just wasn't any way um, that we could bring any kind of projects or anything like that. But we are on the mend. We thank you for your prayers. So many of you have been kind to ask about uh, Rowdy and Howie and us and checking on us. And, and uh, you know, we appreciate friends. Uh, friends like you, we we surely do. We have some exciting things happening at Cedar Creek. We have, um, during this time of us all being in here, kind of uh, not able to go anywhere. Now, Hat Blade, after his uh, a few days of, of the nasty sickness, he did return to work. And uh, he is, uh, you know, working. We're here at the farm. But in our time where we were all together, we were able to uh, make some further decisions on things that we wanted to get nailed down on the farm. One of those things is we uh, brought some more baby ducks in. Um, <coughs> I will um, take you out and show them to you. They're just four little baby ducks that um, happen to be uh, needing a home. And uh, we're glad to give them a home. They are um, Peking ducks, and Cheyenne is excited to have them. That's uh, for whatever reason; those white ones are the ones that are her very favorite, and so she's excited. Um, Howie, however, is scared to death of them, and Rowdy just loves them and tries to get a hold of them. So uh, we have that going on. The other uh, little surprise animal that we got for our homestead we've been wanting these for a while is we've got some um little piglets we got two gilts and two little boys little barrels and um they are all from the same litter 
so two of them, of course, will not stay. They will be um, dispatched later on for our family. Uh, but we're excited to have them. Um, again, Howie is scared to death of them. Um, and I can understand that because piglets are so cute, but they have such a high-pitched squeal that I'm sure it would scare you, if you uh, as a little child. And so he looks from a distance, but he doesn't get close. And uh, they're in temporary housing for now. Um, Blade will be building uh, their pens, and we will be doing some pinning, fencing plus electric fence training, um, and put them, them in a place where they're safe from any predators or anything like that, getting their wallow. We've been out today, and, and um, I made a small wallow for them. Um, it's still pretty hot here. We've had some really, really nice days, but the last three or four days has been pretty warm, and so they're, it's a little shallow area. Cause they're just they're just now away from their mama, so they're not really big piglets. So um, we've done a little wallow for them, and really have to put more water in it just about every day because it dries up. So, but the good news is it's supposed to uh, turn off cooler next week, below average temperatures. We're excited for that, and we have some rain chances. Um, it's we've had a small rain here, but could use a whole lot more rain, and we're looking forward to fall coming on uh, we've been doing a lot of our minds switching to the fall season another thing that we've did for the farm is we went ahead and purchased they won't be here for um, at least until October for some of it so I can tell you about it I just can't show it to you yet we have decided to go in big with strawberries now um, you know in the future it might work up to a you pick that is what our um, what our goal is is right now we've started with a thousand um, we're going to be putting them in this fall a thousand strawberry plugs uh, just to get us started to kind of uh, you know learn all the ropes I've grown strawberries for a year but this is going to be more of a people you know providing for other people plus we'll have um, ample fruits for um, a jelly and jam production and other types of uh, products from strawberries so we have ordered that we're excited for that we've also ordered in a bunch of two-year-old elderberries that we'll be putting in and we will be um, sometime in early spring getting a new freeze dryer we're excited I've wanted one of those for a long long time and um, that's one of the things that we discussed when we talked about putting in more elderberry bushes was the need for a freeze dryer not that you can't have elderberries if you don't have one but we were trying to think about production and the amount of elderberry bushes that we were putting in and that we would need something like that in the future so we're excited about some of that we have a bunch of garlic coming in uh, that will be getting planted this fall for our own use plus um, having some in the future to sell our ultimate goal is to have some things that those being provided here at the farm. Um, uh, we're, uh, Shine and I are still de developing our idea of um, you pick flowers and all those things that's going to bring people in. And we know that it's going to be, you know, each season is going to grow a little bit more. We don't want to just jump out of there, jump out with both feet and get overwhelmed all at once. We realize that. But it's exciting to get started. Um, this has always mainly been cattle with poultry and rabbits and some small things for our own personal use. Um, but, um, you know, as each generation takes on more of the farm, you know, they have their ideas as well. And it's uh, how Blade and his family and I are working together. Uh, we, I still have cows. I don't have as many cows and um, Blade is adding in new things in Cheyenne that they want to go uh, towards in the future with agriculture and with farming and opportunities open up to provide for those around us that the farm might be able to provide and be sustainable. Our main goal is to get this farm paid off. Howie's goal was to get, the, get everything, the farm, totally out of debt by the time that he was 55. That was the goal that he was working on. If he was still with me, he would be 54 this year. Uh, he would have been in July. And so he was getting, he would have been getting really close to that. Uh, after he passed, you guys that have been with me for long know that it, that had to change. And it's okay that it's had to change. The kids are young. They're in their 
early 20s, 20, they're 24, both of them. And um, we have a goal of getting the, par the farm, still getting the farm paid off as quickly as possible. Blade is still working in the industry that he, his daddy had his business and that Blade trained in. It's a good, good industry, heating and air conditioning, appliance repair. Um, and so that provides well. Um, but we also want the farm to move forward and to do some things with that. So we are moving things around and, and um, you know, we have ideas of getting our uh, greenhouses and all of those things going too. And it won't be everything that happens just at once. And any of you that are in a place now that you're just thinking about and dreaming about, you know, there's no, no set rules that say you can only dream this big. Um, you can come up with all kinds of things that you might think that you will enjoy in the future. And I can tell you that some things get scratched off uh, when you think about it for a while and when you uh, start in the process of some of that stuff and you think, no, that's not really for me. There's been some things that Howie and I thought that we wanted to tackle. And once we got into it, we were it just really wasn't the best fit for us. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to say that's not really going to work for me and and my family and the goals that we have for our farm and our family and our future. And so those are some of the things that we've got coming. We've got uh, our little farm animals and we've got um, uh, the kids have got some ideas in mind for the future with um, with pork and with beef. We've already got the beef. Now we've got the pork. Um, we have chicken and turkey, uh, guineas, a few ducks. And a blade is always looking at bringing um, quail back on the farm. And I had to say that I really enjoy growing, uh, raising quail. I have fun with those. And so I'm looking forward to that project getting started again. And, um, you know, we're just, we're just trying to, to um, grow the farm uh, for a future of us being here and working together. And some have kind of scratched their heads about all of us being together. Uh, me as as mom and me ma and the kids and their children all living together but you know what um, every family is different and this is the way things used to be my granny and grandpa lived with my grandpa's um, mom and dad for a while before they got out on their own and still they were just right there pretty close and you know there may be a day I'm sure there will be a day that the kids say you know we want our own space and and that'll be fine but we'll still all be together here on the farm and and um, I love that. I love that I'm a, a big part of the baby's lives and, and Blade and Cheyenne's lives. And they're very, very much so part of mine. And we can all work together and um, figure out how to make a go of this thing. And so anyway, I wanted to, to get on here and explain to you where we've been. I haven't left the country. I know it seems like it has. Uh, but we've had, you know, we just ran into a brick wall. There wasn't anything we could do. Sickness hit and uh, it went through all of us, and I couldn't get even get on here and talk uh, because I couldn't, you know, say two or three things without getting choked up, and right now I'm doing fairly well. So uh, just another big thank you for you guys loving on our family and encouraging us, um, and uh, we want to do some things for you too. We want to uh, bring uh, these projects to you, show you uh, all of them. Now, we'll tell you... I, I, uh, the strawberries, uh, they'll start shipping in October. So for our area, I'm not really sure when exactly they'll get here, but we will get them in before frost. Um, elderberries will come later, uh, maybe, maybe early spring. is, And then the garlic will get here this fall and we'll get in and in as well. When those items get here, we'll be able to show you where we're putting those. Um, I do ha have um, acreage and so we'll be figuring out where's the best place to put all those, plus keep our cows in a in a close proximity for the wintertime so that we're able to keep an eye on them. We know that across the creek we can't put any of our big crops over there because we have a trouble with those wild hogs coming in. We do have deer and uh, uh, other wildlife come in, and we don't want to, uh, especially, especially the deer and the hogs, will get into some of those food plots, patches, and so... Uh, we need. We know that we need to keep the strawberries and some of those other things on this side of the creek up here closer to the house. And so that's fine with me. I love to watch that stuff grow. Now tomorrow we'll be going uh, to a cell around here that they call the Growing Kids Cell. 
and um, they uh, it's a consignment sale that they have at one of the big convention centers in Fort Smith, and we'll be going to that and seeing if we can uh, get some good deals there. And uh, we'll show you some of the um, some of the items that we're able to get. We're always looking for a bargain. This happens to be clothes and shoes and and that kind of stuff. And so uh, I'll have that for you hopefully tomorrow if we get back at a decent time to to show you. And uh, just to let you guys know that we're still here and that we still love you. Well, until next time, guys, this is Josie. I love you guys. I really do. Keep looking well to the ways of your household. Keep loving on your families. And until next time, we're gone.